Hi, everyone, and welcome to our live talk this evening. Um, I am joined by a panel of experts, and we're going to talk about developing leaders in sports and exercise science. Um, my name is Cleo Devani, and I am one of the marketing managers at ATU, and I will be your panel host this evening. Um, firstly, I'd like to just introduce you to everybody who will be talking with uh, throughout this talk. Um, so I am joined by Dr. Ken Van Sommeren, who's a lecturer in sports performance and innovation. I'm also joined by Dr. Kevin Craddock, who is a lecturer and program chair for the Masters in Sports and Exercise Nutrition. And finally, we have Ross Corbett, who is the assistant lecturer and acting program chair for the honours degree in sports and exercise science. So it's great to have you all here today and thank you. their representatives from across our ATU campuses in Donegal, uh, Galway Mayo and in Sligo as well. So um, across ATU, we have a huge range of programmes. We'll be talking mainly about the, the master's programmes that we offer um, and giving you a little bit of an insight about what's different and what's unique about each of them in our, in our colleges. Um, each of the courses we talk about today are open for applications at the moment. And if you have any questions about what comes up on our talk, please do feel free to drop a question into the Q&A box. We have a team uh, who are watching that Q&A box and will be available to answer any questions you have. So hopefully you can relax and enjoy this now for the next 20 minutes and we'll find out all about these, these courses. So um, I'll start maybe with yourself, Ken, if that's okay. Um, yes. Hi, how are you doing? Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, you are you lecture on the Masters in Sports Performance Practice at ATU Donegal. So we wanted to talk about that first and just give us a little bit of an overview about the programme, how long it's been running and, and why you developed the course there. Sure, yeah, well, pleasure, pleasure to join you. Thank you. Um, so we're now in our third year of running and the Masters in Sport Performance Practice really was set up to, in response to growing demand for sports practitioners with knowledge and skills to make a difference for athletes, players, and make a contribution to coaches. And really, I think that that is in part due to the increasing professionalization and globalization of sport, where we see growing demand for sports scientists, coaches, practitioners, and so on. So as the demand increases, so we see the need to provide this level of academic qualification and training for people setting out on a career in this direction. Um, the focus of the program is very much about the application of the science or the application of theory. And we talk about some fundamental principles. So for example, understanding what it takes to win. So we really analyze each sport whatever they might be. It might be Gaelic football, it might be Olympic rowing, trying to understand from a physiological, <clears throat> uh, technical, nutritional, psychological perspective, what do these people need to be doing? Mm -hmm. um, and then we also talk about um, the, the art and the craft of professional practice as well. So yes, we need our technical knowledge and understanding, but we're also about developing graduates and practitioners who have the interpersonal skills, the relationship building skills. So all those professional competencies to be able to go and take this theory and make a difference in the field. Yeah, um, it's fascinating. I suppose you, you touched on a point there, like it is increasing professionalism. You know, the, there's definitely demand out for the, there for this skill set to, to have those qualified professionals. Um, so who who is applying for the course? Like what kind of background do people need to have and an and area of interest in, in order to kind of succeed in the course? Well, over the last three years, we've had a whole host of different, I guess, profile. The majority mm. would be people come, coming from a sports science or a sports science related uh, level eight undergraduates. But we also offer a RPL route, so recognition of prior experiential learning. So we have a couple of, we have one person on our masters currently who comes from psychiatric nursing, someone else with an undergraduate degree and currently working in the IT sector. So really it's aimed for anyone that wants to start or develop their career in any aspect of sport. So again, it could be coaching, we get PE teachers often coming in as well, so secondary sure. school teachers, um, and of course, sports scientists. I think it also probably appeals to people looking to 
develop their management and leadership capabilities within sports as well. Yeah. So I'd say to people, if they have a passion, even if they don't have a degree in a related subject, come and talk to us. Because from an academic uh, interest that you ask about, really I would say the most important thing is just to have a curiosity for sport performance. And if you have that curiosity and that passion, it might be through your coaching, it might be through your own sporting career, then it is all very doable. Oh, that's that's great to hear. You know, again, it it's it's open, and the the those great examples of the variety of of students you have on the the course, um, and obviously the program web page as well lists all the the modules that you teach throughout the the master's program um and would you again i I think it is part-time isn't it so you have people who are working full-time um or is and it's available full-time as well is it well it's a full-time program we do offer a part-time program but up until now we've been running it full-time okay but because of the blended delivery which means it's largely online it's actually been created with the professional learner in mind okay so Online classes every week are recorded and put on our um, uh, online learning platform, Mm -hmm. which means if people are in work full-time or part-time and they can't make the lectures, they can make them up in their own time. Okay. And then on top of that, we do have a couple of blocks each semester, so two two two-day blocks where we get everyone together and we really focus on the practical skills. So it could be in the high performance strength and conditioning suite. It could be in the high performance laboratory, or it might just be working on some of those professional skills and competencies of uh, building rapport, uh, working in a team, communication, and so on. But that very flexible and blended delivery does make it very, very accessible to anyone. Okay, very good, very good. Because I know I was wondering about how proximity to the campus, but obviously that flexible um, model of delivery will allow people to be based outside of the the area, but come Absolutely. for those practicals. Um, and just if you wanted to just finish off with yourself in the last, just even to highlight maybe one module or one area of interest that kind of makes your program unique, um, if you wouldn't mind. Um, well, I, of course, I would say we've got a cracking course team, uh, which is with huge amounts of experience working in high performance sports across a whole range of disciplines. We supplement that with guest speakers and we get guest speakers from both absolute world leaders in their fields, but also just people starting out in their careers as well, which I think is a really valuable perspective for our learners. Another really, I think, I think a unique aspect is the professional practice module. So that really, although in every other module, so we might take a discipline specific focus, for example, physiology or nutrition, but we have this multidisciplinary theme running through them all, which is all about, well, how do we work in the bigger picture in the bigger context of sport performance? But the professional practice module is the one where we really put all of that together We highlight this art and the craft of being a practitioner, and we really allow the learner to focus in on, well, what route do they want to take? Would they like to become accredited as a sports nutritionist, a physiologist, a sports scientist, a coach, a performance analyst? And then we work with you to actually to be able to understand the accreditation process and actually prepare, A, your professional development, but be your future application for that accreditation. Great. That's that's fantastic. Look, I know that was a whistle stop tour, uh, but just the, on the master's in uh, sports performance practice from ATU Donegal. So thank you very much, Ken. There's lots more details on the website. And I know there's a video there as well with the, lots of different tea, uh, lectures speaking about, you know, the op- opportunities there. Um, so thank you. I will move on. Uh, Kevin, you're up next. <laughs> um, uh, we're going to talk I about how you're doing uh, the, the master's in sports and exercise nutrition. So, um, yeah, again, it's very much kind of a sport uh, master's program, but we'll maybe just look at what's different about it and what's unique and, and the offering and stuff like that. So if you if you talk to me about the disciplines of sports and exercise nutrition, how it's evolved recently and, and the growth probably in demand for, for those professionals. Thanks, Cleo, and thanks for the opportunity to to chat about the course. So, yeah, it's 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 interesting to see how much 
the whole space of sports nutrition has evolved over the past 20 years or so. So when I started with the RFU uh, in my role as a strength and conditioning coach way back in the early thousands, so in 2001, there were no sports nutritionists working in a full-time capacity with the RFU. So part of my role as a strength and conditioning coach was to, because I had a master's in sports nutrition, was to do some part-time work as part of my role with the national team and with the provincial teams. So to put it in perspective how that's evolved, so uh, the RFU has since employed a series of sports nutritionists, so headed up by Ruth Wood Martin, who's done a fantastic fantastic job at building a team and building the profile. So now in 2023, there's 12 people working in a full-time capacity. So 20 years ago, there was nobody working in a full-time capacity. So that's fascinating. Yeah, definitely. Full-time roles now being created due to the professionalism and the, the growth of that space, I suppose. Wow. And, um, so you would have people coming into you, I suppose, just around the entry route. So like that's that's a clear indication of kind of how the whole place, it has evolved and the importance that is now placed on it in professional sport, but also in all sports. It's not just the professional era, isn't it? Like it would be kind of across the board in sports, sports nutrition is seen as a key part. Absolutely. This, and we would see that uh, quite quite frequently, Cleo, that there's a huge need for further expertise and quality information across all the levels. So typically the elite level sports tends to be quite well serviced for, via sports nutrition, strength conditioning, psychology. But down the levels, it, the information doesn't always filter through as well as it should. So we see it quite frequently that there's a glaring need for expertise and information across the levels. But to answer your question in terms of the the entry points so we would have um uh, so our entry requirements we would have a variety of um applicants typically coming from sports science we have nutritionists dietitians some people looking to bridge over from other areas of expertise so uh, we have our direct entry route as ken mentioned mm -hmm. and also the rpl route for people who have expertise in another area and just to highlight on a keyword that Ken mentioned that the passion for learning and passion for further learning is really important. So um, we don't rule out candidates because they don't have a degree. So our, our direct entry route is a degree in nutrition or a science related area, an honors 2.2 level degree or higher. But there is an opportunity for um people who have a degree in another area to transfer over through the RPL route who have experience and a passion and have shown some learnings in that area of sports nutrition or nutrition to, to bridge over. Yeah, so they may be working in a professional sports area. They may be working in, in that arena somewhere, but they might not have the science background that that's still something that they can come in and learn. It's not going to prevent them from, from taking the master's course. Absolutely. We've uh, we have had a couple of uh, RPL applicants who's, who've successfully navigated through their first year. And right. as Ken mentioned, I, I, we find our, in here in Sligo that their passion an interest drives them through very well so they can bridge the gap between the areas they have maybe missed with nutrition because they're hungry to learn and they're interested in the material. So we have okay. several successful students who've come through the RPL process. Great. No, that's that's good to hear. And I know if there's anybody interested in that, there's more information on atu.ie forward slash RPL. We'll actually get them some information about how to apply through that method. Um, just uh, one of the things to highlight again, you're from the ATU Sligo and in ATU Galway Mayo, there is also there's a applied sports and exercise nutrition masters and there's a sports and exercise nutrition masters in Sligo. So just if there is a couple of differences or any, any elements that you can highlight between the two, the two courses. So some some similarities and some some differences, Cleo. So very similar subject matter, um, obviously sports and exercise nutrition. So one of the key differences, I suppose, is the time frame. So the masters in Sligo is run over a two year period. It's part time, and it's exclusively online. So the Galway based masters is uh, run over eighteen months, and it offers a more blended learning approach. So there's more face to face on site, and I suppose the key difference with the Galway based uh, masters is there's a practical component so there is work experience built into the program um so i can uh, to yeah, highlight and i suppose that's, uh, people can go to the, the website to, to see more information about what that that actually entails in terms of how they actually 
manage their time and and different modes of learning suit different people and that's probably the the good thing to to notice about that those two offerings exactly so the different offerings are are, are may suit different learners so the attraction for sligo is it's online it's part-time and it offers flexibility so you also have that flexibility with galway but you also have an inbuilt uh, work experience so you've also excellent people working in galway with robert mooney dr robert mooney and um, Nora and Eve Flanagan have both worked worked with both previously and um, they're lucky to have those guys there as well. So uh, yeah. a very good team there as well, no more than the team that we have in Sligo as well. Yeah, good stuff. Um, just one last question for you, Kevin, if that's okay. Um, just the research element of the the course. Like some people, you know, would have questions about that maybe when they're they're uh, undertaking a master's, you know, how much, how do they prepare for that? Do they have to have practical experience, you know, and, and how much guidance and support is, is there in that, that area? So, yeah, great question, Cleo. So I suppose the way we would look at the research element for the masters is probably the most exciting part and the most the biggest opportunity for the student to put their stamp on their masters and to explore an area that they're really passionate about or that they want to really explore so we really actively encourage the students to choose and play a strong role in choosing their master's topic for research rather than us directing them towards it so in terms of support and guidance um, if the master's thesis is run over two, two terms, so it's run over a full calendar year. So there's preparatory work in terms of research methods and statistical um, statistics for sports and exercise. There is also preparation guidance in terms of preparing ethics applications if that's required. And then in Sligo, we run the actual research project from um, January through to September effectively. So the students typically would meet their supervisors on a weekly basis or maybe fortnightly, depending on um, the subject or the criteria, but typically on a weekly basis. So quite a lot of support from um, the different uh, lecturers, depending on their subject area. So we align the subject area or the topic with the lecturer that has experience or expertise in that area as well. Excellent. No, look, that's great. And thank you very much for, for all that information. Hopefully it's been useful to, to people who are thinking about their options at the moment. So I will move on now, if that's OK, to uh, Ross. Thanks, Ross, Cleo. sorry for leaving you to the, the last there now. But, um... No problem, Cleo. Nice <laughs> to be talking to you all. Yes, you too, you too. Um, and look, we are going to talk about, again, we've mentioned there's a, there's a host of, of courses available at master's level from ATU Galway Mayo. Um, and you're going to speak, we'll maybe talk specifically initially about the sports and clinical biomechanics master's that's there. Um, if you could talk to me a little bit just about that discipline area of clinical biomechanics and, um, you know, what, what would students expect from, from that learning? Yeah, so I guess biomechanics looks predominantly at the study of, of human movement. And I guess where we've pitched that master's course is kind of as being two pronged in terms of one, in terms of looking at a risk of injury and addressing that that issue in, in sport and, and in general populations. And also then in terms of improving performance. So you could you could look at the field of biomechanics is falling, let's say, maybe between physio and strength conditioning or performance. So mm -hmm. um, we try and prepare students to um, be able to be a nice go between between those two two disciplines. Excellent. And I suppose like what area would typically students have come from in order to actually, you know, specialize in that area? So we would have... Uh, some people who come from a physio background, a lot of people who come from a sport and exercise science background. Um, we also have an RPL route, just like Kevin and, yes. and Ken have talked about as well. So we'd have that same RPL application pathway as well. Um, we have some, we have one student in this year's cohort has come from a gymnastics coaching background, uh, where biomechanics is obviously hugely important in terms of, of that sport and being able to, to break it down and, and address issues. Uh, we've on a, one other student on the current cohort that comes from a podiatry background. Um, so she was particularly interested in looking at, um, particularly around the foot area and, and how that affects um, performance and, and injury risk from, from her background. 
Excellent. Yeah, the whole variety there of, of disciplines and I suppose areas of interest that people can specialize in. Yeah. Um, and then typically um, somebody will undertake the, the master's. And is it a full time or part time or what level of time commitment do they need to, to give to the, the course? Yeah, so it's a full time course, so full time over 18 months. Um, so you have three semesters involved there, similar to as Kevin was talking about with their nutrition masters. Again, we run lectures live weekly, but they're also recorded and, and placed on Moodle. So again, if people miss them, they can watch them back. Um, and we also have three to four uh, practical days where students come to Galway into our lab uh, and do their practical content there. So there's three to four, one to two day um, workshop kind of style um, blocks of content across each semester. And and is there also the research element there in in the master's side of things as well with the, the sports? and? Yeah, so in the case. biomechanics master's, there's 60 credits um, of research. So 60 credits of research. So it also kind of qualifies as a research master's. Okay, very good. And do you find that people, again, is it kind of they, they base it on their, their background or their experience, you know, in terms of what they focus on for their, their master's research? Yeah, absolutely. So we leave it open to the students. We make some suggestions based on the, the lecturer slash supervisor's areas of interest. So we have some people that would be putting forward ideas from, at the moment, swimming, golf, gymnastics, a strength conditioning background. Um, but again, those ideas can work around the, the student as well. Um, so the student can bring forward their own idea or they can align themselves with an idea that's proposed by uh, their supervisor or uh, a member of staff. OK, excellent. And I know I wanted to just briefly touch on there's uh, another master's that offered in Galway City, the master's in strength and conditioning. Um, and just even if you could highlight, you know, what maybe why somebody would apply for, for that course over, you know, or what typically kind of type of applicants do you get for the master's in, in strength and conditioning? Yeah, so typically on the strength and conditioning master's, most of our applicants would come from a sport and exercise but science background. Again, we have that RPL route. So in, in the past, we've had people that have come from, let's say, teaching backgrounds or, or that have passions in sport as well. Uh, so that's where a lot of our students would come from again i guess a lot of people would apply either in the hope of opening their own business in strength conditioning mm -hmm. or going on to to work in i guess ideally for a lot of people in elite sport but um also at different ranges of, of sport so we've some of our graduates from that course are working with connacht rugby galway united in league of ireland different uh levels of strength conditioning within the, the ga as well yeah, very good. Now, I, do, I know on your own website, the, the Masters in Strength and Conditioning, there's a webinar there. It's about a 13-minute webinar, and you have two students talking about their experience, uh, somebody who's coaching in Galway United and somebody from Connacht Rugby as well. So yeah. it's worth, if, if somebody's interested in the course, just to have a look at that video. And um, again, they talk about their experience, why they studied it, and some advice for anybody who's who's thinking about taking on the, the Masters, you know, what they need to consider. Um, so there's, there's great information there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, look, I'm sorry now that we have to, to draw things to a close at this stage. I know we've touched on a lot of areas. Um, there's sports performance masters, there's strength and conditioning, sports and exercise nutrition, sport and clinical biomechanics. Um, if you go to atu.ie forward slash flexible, and there is a category there called um, sport and ex exercise science, um, the whole, all the courses that are offered are listed there. A lot of the courses we talked about today as well, they're available as masters, but there's also exit routes at postgraduate diploma level. We find that some students come in and they do the postgraduate diploma and then they, you know, take on the master's, uh, you know, uh, when they get they get hooked on it, I suppose, and, and want to progress into, into the master's uh, award. So there's lots of flexibility, lots of options there. Um, and again, we could talk for a long, lot longer on each of these, but hopefully it's given people a flavor for what's available from ATU. Um, and I'll just finish by saying thank you very much to each of our panelists, to Ken from ATU Donegal, to Kevin from ATU Sligo, and to Ross from ATU Galway Mayo. Um, it's been great to hear all your expertise in the area and kind of the differences and the, the uniqueness that, that each of you bring to, to the offering. So thank you very much for your time.
Um, and that's it for us now. And if you have, as I say, if you have any questions, please do pop a question into the Q&A section. And this video has been recorded and will be posted on the ATU YouTube channel as well. So it's available to watch back there. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>